Alex and welcome back to my YouTube channel where I chat about the things that I'm knitting and sewing each month. Um, it's a really lovely sunny day today which is probably going to affect our lighting a little bit, you can tell already. The sun's popped out from behind a cloud and it just keeps going in and out, in and out. So sorry if that bothers you today but hopefully it will remain fairly consistent. Let's have a sip of my tea and I'll start by telling you what I'm wearing. I've got the Branches and Buds pullover which is Carrie Bostick Hogue pattern from Making Magazine. I think it was their first issue, the Flora issue that had this Branches pattern in and yeah I really like it. It's one of my favourite sweaters to make. I probably could have even been three years ago now that I knit this um, sweater and it's a Quince & Co Chickadee which is such a comfortable yarn to wear. There's zero prickle, it's 100% wool, it's a sport weight, so I find it's like a really, really comfortable weight to wear. It's not too bulky, it just feels really, really nice, and yeah, so I'm happy to be able to wear this again at this time of year. So yeah, that's what I'm wearing today, and I'll start by showing you some of my makes, I think. Um, one of the things I've got on the needles at the moment is in one of my little autumn bags. And I feel bad showing these because they're all gone now. I think they I think the last one's sold already. So can't get these until next year. But it's still really nice to keep these socks in this bag because they're called the Cozy Autumn Socks. And yeah, I really love this pattern. It's the first time I've knit these and I think they've turned out beautifully. It's a pattern by This Handmade Life. Um, I'll see if I can put it on my hand and show you like that because I think the main sort of pattern is on the it's this cable that's on the front of the foot so I feel like you don't get such a great look when you look at it from the side but it's yeah it's a really really beautiful pattern and as I said it's called the cozy autumn socks so it felt like just the right time of year to wear it and although it's coming up a little bit bright on the camera it is a really gorgeous like rusty autumnal lovely kind of autumn leaf colour and that's the, the yarns from the wool barn. It's wool barn soft sock, you can see I've got my little DPN, I think I've still got some of the DPN holders but I don't have any of the sets with the little bag. If you wanted a little autumn DPN cosy but I'll show you, I've got the leg already done on this and oh the only thing I did wrong was the cuffs. I was really ill when I cast these on. It was like a bit of a comfort knit and I obviously didn't have my full brain power because for some reason I knit the cuff one by one which is not in the pattern and it's not how I ever knit a cuff. I never knit them one by one. They're always two by two which is what the pattern calls for so I don't know why I did this one by one. So yeah when I started the second sock I actually knit this with the two by two as it said in the pattern and I had to rip it all out so it would match the original sock but yeah I'm not sure if I said the colourway of this it's called Burnt Caramel and it's a really old colourway as well I've had this little had a couple of little balls of this left in my stash from a few years ago and I've been saving it for just this kind of time of year when I wanted to knit a lovely autumn sock so I'm really really enjoying that and actually talking about little um cakes. I'm not sure, have you seen the video that I put up, I think it was about a week ago, showing you how to wind your yarn balls like I do. So if you've been one of the people that have messaged me, because there haven't been loads of you, but every now and then when I show these kind of yarn cakes, somebody says to me, oh they're so neat, how do you wind them? And I finally, after saying I would for quite a few weeks, I got that video done. So you'll find that here on my YouTube channel and also over on the blog. And I think, actually, while I'm talking about the blog, if you want any of the show notes on today's episode, that's where you'll find them. So there'll be a link below this video, and it'll have all the yarns and the fabrics and patterns that I've talked about today. Everything will be in the show notes there. And I send that out to my um, show notes subscribers as well. So you can actually get the show notes to your email. If you wanted to do that, there'll be a link for that below. And every time a video goes up, I'll send you an email letting you know there's a new video and I'll put all the show notes right there in an email to you so lots of people like doing that so yeah you can get both of those things below and I'll pop those away and next thing you saw this last time this is another autumn bag I think there's one of these left so if 
one of you is quick, you might be able to get it. <laughs> I think there's one autumn bag left. So I show you the yarn. This is the Fiberco Luma, and I did show you this last time. This is the Sherry colorway, and I was using it to knit the Rift Tee. Let's have a look. This is going to be a bit tricky to show because basically I'm working on the back portion. So you can see it's looking really nice. It's a cropped sweater, but I've actually I've done the front, and you can see it's a bit. It feels hard to show you, but that's the V-neck portion. That's going to be at the front. You can. It's really clever actually. The way she does the pattern, she you can almost sort of build it yourself. So you can have the boat neck or at the front and the back. You can have the boat neck just at the back, like I'm doing. You can have the V-neck at the back, the boat neck at the front. <laughs> it's like a few different combinations. But I'm doing it V-neck at the front, boat neck at the back. And I'll just show you, this is the detail that you get at the side, this really nice, lovely, I think, I don't know, do you call it a twisted rib? It's the kind of rib when you knit through the back loop, and that continues on the hem, and you can see it's got a really nice little split hem there. So I actually haven't got that far to go, so when I film next time, this will probably be finished, because I've only got to do to the back and then I'm not sure what happens with the sleeves they have like really really small sleeves so I'm not sure if that's it or if there's I can't remember in the pattern if there's something you do to finish the sleeves a little better um, but they actually look really neat how they are so perhaps you just join the front and the backs together so that's the other thing that I've had on my needles those are the two main things that I've been sewing this month and you can see they're both lovely autumnal colours so I've been enjoying working on those and having them in my autumn bags which I think I was saying to you last time that I really like matching my bags to the seasons and changing my projects over so that's what I've got at the moment for that and I've just got a couple of sewing bits to show you I've got the first thing is the Adelia top which is actually from a pattern that's a dress it's by the hemming and I've cropped it into a little top which this has actually been a slight fail I think it probably looks okay on the camera and I probably will wear it you can see it's only got two buttons that was one of the things was that when I went to pick up the buttons they only had two left in the style so I need to go back um, and pick up the rest of those when they've got them back in and the only other thing is this fabric is not great, it's just a little bit too flimsy. I've made this top before and I've worn it to death, I wear it all the time. And I thought it would be really great to have another couple of this style. But when this is the problem when you order fabrics online that you can never tell. It's the same composition, um, it's like a viscous, a floral viscous. And it's just, it's lighter only very slightly but it's a little bit lighter than the fabric that I used last time which had a really nice drape but this is almost too drapey it doesn't have enough structure to it and although it does have um, the sort of placket and the neck has got interfacing in but I just find it doesn't drape very nice it doesn't have sort of a really nice feel it almost looks a little bit cheap which is a shame so yeah I thought I'd be honest and show you and let you know that it does look it does look nice when you look at it, but when I've when I was sewing it, it wasn't very enjoyable to sew because it was so fine and flimsy and very very drapey. It's almost got that little bit too much drape that it just doesn't hang nicely. It sort of just doesn't have enough body to it. So I thought I should be honest and tell you that yeah, that was a bit of a fail, and I should have known as soon as I sort of started sewing the fabric, I could tell it was a little bit just didn't have enough body to it. But sometimes you have to do these things to learn. And fortunately, it was an inexpensive fabric, so it wasn't, wasn't a big loss there. Sometimes that can be really heartbreaking. At least with knitting, you can, if something goes wrong, you can just unravel your project and you've still got your yarn. But with fabric, once you've cut into it, that's it. So unfortunately, that's just what happens sometimes. And uh, sorry about the light. I can see that it's got really, really bright in here again. I hope it's not going to bother you too much. And... I think the colours are still showing pretty accurately. I'll show you the last sewing bit I've got to show you is the Hudson pants, which is a pattern that I've knit before, and they probably don't look that exciting. I don't know if I can show you very well because it's hard showing something that's long, but they're like um, a little cuffed jogging bottom, and they have this nice pocket detail. 
which is really cute. But basically, yeah, I just wanted to sew myself some new loungewear, and this is the perfect pattern. I've used this before. It's um, is it a true bias pattern? I think. Um, let me think. Yeah, the Hudson pants. They're true bias, and I don't know if you can see but it's like a slight it's like a blue mull fabric and this is such a good fabric this is like the opposite problem to what i had with the um adelia tea this is the perfect fabric for this it's from ray stitch and it's it's so hard buying jersey getting the right jersey online but i was able to go to the store they actually have ray stitch and loop if you're a knitter you probably know loop in london they're walking distance from each other so every now and then i try and hit both of the shops and this was a purchase from ray stitch and it's got a really good body to it but it's still super soft so that's the thing with jersey sometimes if you have like a really soft jersey it can be very drapey it might be like a bamboo blend or something and then it doesn't have the body for something like a jogging bottom but these yeah it's just it's the right fabric for this it's nice it's soft thick it's not um it doesn't have like the brushed in sides it's just um it's just a slightly sort of thicker heavier weight it's a little i'd say it's a little bit well it depends what t-shirts you wear like I tend to wear sort of quite fine knit t-shirts so I feel like this is slightly heavier than a normal t-shirt that I'd wear but it's not like a really thick jogging bottom fabric this would work for like sweaters and long sleeve t-shirts that kind of thing so that's the first part of my little like loungewear wardrobe update so I've got these and, and they're really nice fit actually. I adapted the pattern when I knit, um, when I sewed them the first time. I took a little bit out of the length and yeah, they just fit me perfectly. So I'm doing those and then I thought, I haven't, I've cut out the fabric but these have not been sewn so you have to wait until see my next video. But I'm doing the Linden sweatshirt and I don't know if you can be able to see that because it's got super bright. Let's see. Let me see if I can turn you down. I think you can, well, I'll put it in the show notes. You probably can just about see that. But ah, there, we're getting it. I think the sun's popping behind a cloud. <laughs> so yeah, you can finally see. So that's the gray line. I'm gonna do the top one with the long sleeves and you see it's got this like raglan shaping. So yeah, as I say, I cut that out of the same fabric as this. I had enough out of two meters of fabric, I was able to get the sweater and um, and the joggers. Although I probably wouldn't wear them together. It's like I like my things to not be too matchy matchy, but to all coordinate. So like I would wear the. Let me show you. I've got this t-shirt pattern as well. This is another grain line. This is the, what is this one called? Hemlock, Hemlock Tea. This is actually a free pattern, so if you get on their mailing list, this is a free one, and I've made this several times where I don't add the sleeves, and it makes like a really nice um, boat neck top. And yeah, I've done these quite a lot. I actually use those as like workout t-shirts, because they're like really loose and breathable, so. Um, so yeah, like I'd wear the Hudson pants, with like a hemlock tee in a slightly different fabric so I've got like a light blue mile and then I'd probably wear the linden sweatshirt with like some leggings or something I really want to I've got a couple of pairs of leggings that I've just had for years that um just plain black leggings but I'd really like to when I find the right material um sew up some Avery leggings I think Avery are by closet case patterns and no, hold on, it's not closet case. It's Helen's closet, that's it. I knew it was something closet. Helen's closet, she does the Avery leggings. So I'd really like to probably make some of those. But as I said with Jersey, it, you kind of really need to find the right fabric. So often I don't try and plan a project by thinking of what the piece I want to make and then find the fabric. I tend to let the fabrics dictate what I make with them. So I'll go fabric shopping and if I see some really nice jersey that I, that I like and that's the right weight and the right stretch, then I know they'll be right for Avery and I'll pick some of that up. But yeah, so that's going to be like my little loungewear wardrobe that I'm going to make up a few pieces. I think I will get some more of this jersey from Ray Stitch as well in another colour, maybe in like a black or a grey. 
um, yeah, just to do some other pieces. But uh, yeah, I like to have a few things that I can mix, mix and match. But also, you might be interested, I don't know if this is interesting, but this is how I like to store my patterns. So I've just got them in these like mini, um, these cardboard envelopes. And yeah, I print off the first page of the pattern and I just stick it on sellotape. And they're really, really good because they're quite, um, they really, they wear, if you're like pulling patterns in and out, and also like I have loads of them, so they're all like stacked up and I'm always like flicking through them all. So they're just quite robust having them in these like cardboard envelopes rather than, I used to use just like traditional kind of manila envelopes, but over time they always like wear through in the corners and the flaps get like, always end up falling off. But yeah, so I don't know if you find that interesting, but that's how I store my patterns and you can see really clearly what they are. And yeah, I just have them next to my box, I have a box of fabrics and then these in my wardrobe all just like stacked up next to each other. So that's another thing to note. So yeah, that's what I've been sewing this month. And yeah, I haven't got many other projects on the go. I'll show you um, something that I did work on for Emma of the Woolly Mammoth is these sweater sacks. And I just wanted to show you these because she, I think she put them in her shop just a few days ago. And let's see if it will show up her lovely logo. These are basic on the back and on the front it's got one of my floral designs. This actually hasn't been in the shop for a really long time. It's one of like the early designs that I did. Ah, oh, that's good. The sun's gone in for a minute and we can have a better look. There we go. And on this side. Some eagle-eyed people might notice that there's a smudge on this print, which is why I kept this bag and I didn't send it to Emma. So if you have noticed that, don't worry. All the ones I sent to Emma were in perfect condition. They won't have a smudge on them. But yeah, so these are the sweater sacks. I'll put in the show notes a link to Emma's shop, the Woolly Mammoth Fibre Co, where you can see these bags. I did the little sock sacks for her this time last year when it was her one year anniversary. And yeah, she commissioned me to do some of the larger sweater sacks this year. So that was really, really fun to get to print those up for her. So I've got those and then the last thing to note is that winter bags are coming so if you're on my newsletter list you'll be getting an email really soon to pre-order the winter bags that are coming back. So if you've been a long time follower you'll remember these from last year, these are the second year they've come back. They've got, I wonder if we could spot it up, there it is, it's down in this corner. There's a little cabin in the woods and on each side, you can spot there's a little one down there. I think there's one up here somewhere. Yeah, up here. So you, it's like almost like a little Where's Wally to find your cabins. And it's got these little gold accents on the trees. I just love these bags. They're one of my favourites. So I can't wait to have these back. So yeah, I'm going to be opening pre-orders for those in the next few days. When this video goes up at the weekend, you probably will get the um, notice about the pre-order a day or two either side of that. So I have those and there will be the little sock sets as well. Oh, sun's come out again. And um, that's it. You can see I've got things and they come with a little, or you can order them separately, but most people tend to go for the sets because you get a better price if you buy them together. And these are like the little DPN cozies and they have my logo on the back. And same with this one. So yeah, that's the shop news for this month. And that's all I've got to show you. Um, hopefully it's getting really, really busy. As you can imagine when you have a shop this time of year, is so busy. Um, so I've been doing lots of sewing for the shop and I have been um, sort of knitting on things like my Rift doesn't take too much brain power. So sometimes I want to just wind down in the evening. I'll do a few rows, but I'm really hoping that I can keep up with my makes because I enjoy doing um, some things for myself that are not work related. So hopefully in a few weeks I'll have another Christmassy video for you and I'll be able to show you what I've been making. I've got some plans to do some little ornaments and hopefully I'll have my rift finished. And yeah, I've got a few other sewing bits. I've got those loungewear pieces that I'm doing and yeah, I'm really looking forward to sewing some bits over the 
next month and then yeah and it will be really close to Christmas because I think we're sort of early November so yeah when I film next time it will be feeling very Christmassy I think so thanks very much for watching and um, if you enjoyed the video like and subscribe and just click that link below if you want to find the show notes in the blog and subscribe to the newsletter if you want to get the show notes to your newsletter and yeah leave me a comment if you want to ask any questions about things that I've been making or I love it when you share something below and tell me that you've been inspired to make something or you just let me know what you're working on while you're watching I really really enjoy that so I'd love to hear from you but thanks for watching and I'll see you soon bye